All right, so children, very good. It's 431, okay? So at this moment, right, we'll be starting our math lesson. All right, for the P3, P4, we'll be doing a little bit of Desmos. The Desmos last week got two questions as homework, right? There's two questions as homework. So can we take a look at the two questions as homework? Do you manage to do those two questions? Okay, I hope so. Uh, and just now I got one student asking whether, hey, where do we download the worksheet? Okay, don't worry, later I'll show you where to download the worksheet. Okay, so don't worry about this. Okay, this one is supposed to be from the last week's worksheet and last week we did something called Desmos, all right? And Desmos problem sums, like you know that, you know, primary three, primary four, primary five, and primary six, a lot, a lot of questions are all problem sums related, correct? All right, so I can strongly say that in P5, P6, right, uh, close to, I think, 70 to 80% of the entire paper, they are all problem sums, all right? So you better like problem sums. All right, and because you are here, right, can I just say something? All right, if you can do train yourself in the understanding of the question, okay? Because last time when I was in primary three, right, when I see two numbers, I simply just ah, just add it up, or when I see two numbers, ah, I simply minus them. All right, it's either a plus or a minus, but please understand that it doesn't work every time. All right, slowly along the way, you have to develop some of the understanding skill. Read the question a few times. Once you can understand the question, you can solve the question. All right, so let's try to take a look at this slowly. Okay, uh, some of you say that you do not have the worksheet. This worksheet is from last lesson, all right, last week. Last week, we didn't finish question uh, six and question seven, I believe. All right, we'll do, we need the question one to five. So this was from the last week's uh, worksheet. Okay. All right, so what happened down here? We are talking about pens and pencil. Let's try to understand the question. Let's try to read the question a couple of times first. All right, let's go. So we have Jesslyn bought some pens and pencil. The number of pencil bought was three times the number of pens bought. So in this case, right, I see this three times, right? Usually I do what? I do a model diagram first because I see this three times. All right, I see this three times. So at this moment, right, I can just simply draw a quick model. Number of pens, sir, three times the number of pens. So who got more? All right, who got more? Ah, so in this case, it's the pencil that got more. So pencils versus pen. All right, and pencil is three times the pen. Something like that. All right, so this one, right, all these sizes are the same one. So I, I put a little X down there, all right, to show that it is the same unit, okay? Uh, so a lot of you are asking about the worksheet and all this, all right? We can get the worksheet from the website. Yes, you can get the worksheet, all right? For those who do not, wear, do not know where to get the worksheet, let me just show it to you one time, all right? So that we can proceed on with the questions here. Because I want to be fair, there are students down there waiting and they already have their worksheet with them. And some of you, if you do not have your worksheet, it's perfectly okay. You can actually listen to the lesson first. All right, then after about two days, this uh, recording right will be uploaded into our website. Okay, then from down there, you can actually rewatch this video again. All right, but let me just show it to the students uh, one more time where to get a worksheet. All right, so that they will feel uh, a little bit more comfortable. Okay, so let me just show it to you. Okay, you can actually go to our website. Many of you went to this website. Yes, it's called ADA Tuition. You can click on the live classes, all right? Click on, the, click on the live classes. And can you see down here? Yes? All right, whole numbers. Do you see whole numbers? And under whole numbers, there's this class prerequisite. All right, this class prerequisite, if you click on it, what happened? All right, there's this file that you can be open. All right, this one is for today's worksheet, all right? Where we are talking about posts and gaps. We are talking about age difference, never change. We are talking about too many, too little. This is this week's worksheet. All right, this week's worksheet. If I cannot finish this week's worksheet, right, this lesson, right, this worksheet, right, will be used for next week or so for the last a couple of questions. All right, that, those will be considered your homework. Let's see whether can we finish this worksheet this week. Okay, so you can actually, right, look through the, the questions here and you can actually print it out if you need to. Is that okay? Okay. So what is next is uh, some of you are asking, hey, where's the question for the decimal? Jesslyn got pens and pencil and all this. So what, what you do? All right, you can actually go to the past lesson. All right, click on the past lessons. All right, last week, right, I was teaching something called the decimal down here. Can you see? All right, last week is the 14th of May. This today is the 21 of May. All right, so on the 14th of May, I was teaching decimals and there's something called a class prerequisite. Yes, you can click on the class prerequisite. 
right? And you can actually download the worksheet again. And the Jesslyn question appears here. Can you see? Nah? Question six here. Nah? Jesslyn bought some pens, correct? So it's all on the website. So you need to know where to find it. Is that okay? All right, so this worksheet is from last week. All right, the reason why I'm doing the last week's worksheet is because the last two questions, I gave it to you as homework. All right, if you never come last week, it's perfectly okay. This is the place where you look for the worksheet. Is that cool? All right, then in any case, in any case, hey, how about question one to five? Somebody will be asking, all right, because now I'm doing question six and seven. How about question one to five here? Go to the class notes, click on the class notes. All right, and then down here, you can actually download the PowerPoint. Okay, so question one to five, right? is inside here, okay, where, yeah, this is question one, all right, question two, and so on, all right, and this worksheet, right, can you see that question five is here, but question six is empty, all right, question six, I only give the answer, can you see that, yeah, so I'm giving the answer so that you can actually work with it, so if you can get the answer, you feel, yes, I did it, I did it well, can you understand, all right, so I hopefully I have uh, clarified your, your inquiries about the worksheet and all this, all right, do use our website. It's very, very user-friendly and everything is up there. Is that okay? So schedule today, we are doing the whole numbers and today we'll be focusing on something called um, KPO, E2M and all this. All right, let's go into the lesson in proper, shall we? Okay, so now let's go back into our lesson. Okay. okay, so down here, we're talking about the Desmos again, all right? Uh, yes, Tang, I, I totally understand, but do understand there are many students, there are new students coming in and all this. I think we need to be fair to them also, all right? Uh, what are we going to learn um, later, Ken? All right, we are going to learn something called uh, posts and gaps. We are going to learn something called um, uh, age difference, double change and all this. All right, so down here, what's happening? Okay, we know that the pencils bought was three times the number of pens. So in terms of model, I'm going to draw three units for pencils and one unit for pens. All right, then down here, they talk about something called the prizes. All right, what's the meaning of prizes? Prizes means the amount that you have to pay. So for each pencil, it is 80 cents. Eh? But for each pen, it is a little bit more expensive. It is twice the price of a pencil. Eh? What's the meaning of twice? Twice means two times. So if a pencil is 80 cents, if a pencil is 80 cents, a pen is twice means you have two times, times two. So 80 cents times two, yes, you can use your mental calculation. It's like the eight time table, eight, 16, all right? But it cannot be $16. So you do a little bit of estimate is something like $1 and 60 cents. Can you see? All right, or you can think of 80 cents plus 80 cents. I have 80 cents, I plus another 80 cents. It is actually $1 and 60 cents, all right? Uh, so let's move on. So now we know that one pen is $1.60. I have actually answered the question for A. Yes, I feel good because I get one of the answer correct already. All right? Then you continue. Uh, she paid a total of $24 for the pens and pencil. Oh, so the total amount that she paid for, everything that she paid for is $24. Okay, this part is the a little bit uh, headed portion. All right, this part is the, a little bit headed portion. All right, so let's take a look at the question again. Remember that she buy what? She buy three times as many pencils as pen. All right, so let's take a look at this diagram here. Okay, this diagram, right? One pencil is how much? 80 cent, right? So I put a 80 cent on the pencil. The second one, the second pencil is also 80 cent. And the third pencil is also 80 cent. Can you see not? So if she buy three pencils, if she buy three pencils, one pen down here will be how much? $1.60. Can you see? This will be $1.60. If she buy three pencil, she will have to buy one pen. That is the rule. All right? That is the rule of the question. All right? She buy the number of pencils bought was three times the number of pens bought. Means that if she buy three pencil, she have to buy one pen. All right? So if one pencil is 80 cents, three pencils will be? All right? So down here, you can say three pencils will be how much? Three pencils times, each pencil is 80 cents. Huh? All right, this one will be how much? You think of your 80 cents, eight time table again. All right, eight, 16, 24. Can it be $24? No, it can be $2.40. Yes, uh, Rashita, Rashita, uh, yeah? 
is two dollar forty cent. Correct. I'm sorry that I pronounced your name wrongly. All right. So it's two dollar forty cent. Is correct for three pences. All right. And and the one pen, the one pen is how much? The one pen, ah, uh, one pen is at how much? One dollar sixty cent. Just now we found already. Just now we found. Can? Okay. So down here, what is happening is we call this one set. Okay. Have you went to uh, the bookshop before? All right, the, our very uh, famous bookshop in Singapore is called the Popular Bookshop. And Popular Bookshop, right, sometimes you see them selling pen and pencil in one packet one. All right, so in one packet like that, right, it's like some promotional pack. All right, in one packet here, okay, they sell what? They sell three pencils. All right, they sell three pencils. And they also sell what? They also sell one pen inside, probably. Can? They sell one pen inside. So this is like a promotional pack. So I call this like one pack or we call this like one set. All right, we call this like one set. This is one set or one pack. All right, so sometimes you go to popular bookshop, you can actually look for such things. Inside got some pencil, inside got some pens. It's a good mix. All right, then you don't have to pay so much for uh, all the pens. All right, so this one set, right, this one pack, right, costs how much? Oh, uh, inside got three pencil and one pen, right? So what's the total down here? All right, what's the total down here for one pack? Uh? So it's actually $2.40 plus your what? Plus your one dollar and sixty cent, all right. And if you add them together, right? Ah, uh, you do a side working. You add them together. Two dollar forty cent plus one dollar sixty cent. Remember, for decimal, if you add them, right, the decimal point must be all in line. The decimal point must be all in line. So your dot is here, all right. Zero plus zero is a zero. Four plus six is a ten. So zero here and a one on top, all right. So two plus one plus one is a four. Can you see? Uh. Mm, which one? How come I don't have the thing on your screen like the queue? Um, I don't understand what queue. So sorry about it. Uh, thank. Maybe you want to explain what queue. Okay, so down here, right? Yes, three pencil and one pen, right? Makes one packet. One packet, right? It costs how much? It cost me four dollars. Can you see? All right. So one packet like this, ah, uh, one packet like this cost me four dollars. Is that okay? All right. So if you go to popular bookshop, all right, you see a packet like that, three pencil inside, one pen. Four dollars. Okay, it's okay. Okay. Um, the Q, the Q doesn't matter. Uh, tank. That's not important. Q means question, uh. Don't worry about that. All right. Don't worry about that. Q means question six. All right. So down here, uh, remember, uh, if one packet costs four dollars, one packet costs four dollars. How much do I have? Hi, Loy. All right. How much do I have? I have twenty-four dollars. You know. If I have twenty-four dollars, I have twenty-four dollars. How many? Packets can I buy? That's the question. Remember, one packet is how much? One packet is four dollars. All right, one packet is four dollars. Uh, thank, thank. Uh, I explained this already. This question, right? Question six and seven, right? Thank. Can you please listen? Question six and seven is the homework. Can you see the homework down here? And the homework comes from the previous week's worksheet. All right, the homework comes from the previous week's worksheet. All right, just now I show you where to get the previous week's worksheet already. All right, so don't worry about it. All right, if you don't have it, don't worry. Don't have it, don't worry. Just listen. Just listen to the lesson. All right, don't get distracted. All right, I need your focus. Your focus is very important down here. All right, so don't worry about uh, whether where's the worksheet or not. Understand the question and listen to the lesson. Everything will be okay. Is that okay? Excellent. All right, so down here, right, I got $24. If I have $24, okay, if I have $24 and one packet costs me $4, how many packets can I buy? That's my question. So $24 divided by $4, one packet is $4, remember? That will be equal to what? Yes, some of you say six. Yes, very good. All right, let's, uh, let's yeah, and uh, Shiva Shakan, is it? All right, you say six, uh, six packet, very good. So I call these six sets or six packet. Okay, so six packet, right? What's the question one? Is the question asking for uh, how many packets can you buy? Let's look, look at the question. How many pencils are there? Remember, one packet got how many green pencils here? One, two, three. One packet got three green pencils. All right, one packet got three green packet. Six packet got 18 pencils. Can you see? Woo! Feels so good. I get the right answer again. Can you see? Yes, very good. One packet, six times three is 18. Thank you. All right. Thank you, uh, Rush. Okay, so down here is a very, actually, uh, it's a, quite a simple question. But this type of question, right, will slowly bring the primary four into primary five, whereby we start to learn something called 
grouping things in a set. Right, you start to group things in one set. So one set means what? One set means got three pencil, one pen. All. So this is called one set. All right, so slowly, slowly, you'll be seeing a lot of this style of question coming out really. Cool? All right, so this is the homework from last week. Don't worry about it. If you do not have the worksheet, just listen to the lesson. Don't worry, all right? So the next question, question seven, all right? Uh, for those who haven't finished copying, right, can you please quickly just take a picture, all right? Use your phone and take a picture of the solution if you need to. If not, don't worry. As I say, this recording is already recorded, all right? This recording will be put up in our website in the next couple of days. Then you can actually rewatch again. You can re-practice again yourself. That is very important, all right? Teaching is one thing, but for you, you have to practice. That's another thing, all right? That one, you have to put in some effort, huh? All right, so moving on to question seven. Let's take a look. Victory! Victory has a sum of money to buy some apples. All right, so she got a sum of money. All right, uh, Chloe, you do not have a phone. It's perfectly okay. As I, as I did, I give you a suggestion just now. All right, you can actually go to our website to look at this recording once again. All right, but if you need to, all right, let me just let you look at it in a quick, all right, another time. All right, and actually the best time, the best thing to do when you are doing your practice question is how? Is to totally understand what is happening first. So actually just now you shouldn't be busy copying whatever I say. Right, you should be listening to what I, what I say and what I'm doing. Once you can fully understand it, right, then you go and download the worksheet. You print out the worksheet and you re-attempt the worksheet on your own time. All right. Once you attempt the worksheet on your own time and you can get the same answer as I do, right? It means that you fully understand what the question is trying to say. And that feels even better. Why? Because you totally understand. And once you understand, you can apply into the question. Whew, that is amazing. The feeling is very good. All right. It's like getting the correct answer. You see the tick. Whew, all right. It feels so good. All right. Anyway, I think I took talk too much. Question seven. Victory has a sum of money to buy some apples. All right. So this amount of money that she has, right, all right, is this amount. I don't know how much, but let me just draw a, a, a unit like this first. Okay, let me just draw a unit like this. All right, so this is like the total money she has. This is like the total amount of money she has. All right, so usually, right, for me, right, uh, I got this rule to myself, all right, uh, if there's no total, usually I will draw model. All right, so this, this model actually uh, gives me a little bit of, um, gives me a little bit of confidence. Okay, so let me draw a total model first. This is the total that she has in the beginning. Then what happened? Now with this total, right, with this one uh, white unit, right, what she do? She went to buy some apples. Ah, there's two different situations down here. There's two different situations. If, uh, if she go and buy six apples, all right, if she buys six apples, one apple, two apple, three apple, four, five, six apple. All right, eh, she will have $1 left. Yes, sell in. No total draw model. Yes. All right, you have seen my lessons a few times already. That's why you know my style already. All right, so ultimately, come up with your own style also. All right, use all this method, right? Uh, like KPO, uh, no, fresh, uh, no total use model and all this, right? Try to assist yourself in coming up with your own ways of solving. All right, that would be more better if you can also. All right, eh, so what happened? After buying the six apple, right? Apple is the one in yellow. La. Just imagine a yellow apple can. All right. After buying six apples, she got one dollar left. Where is the one dollar? One dollar is this portion. All right. One dollar is this green color portion. Can you see this green color portion? All right. So this is like the remaining one dollar. Can you see? All right. So the white color portion is like the total amount you have. You cannot go out of it. You cannot uh, have anything lesser. Everything must be accounted for. So this white color portion, you can have what? You can have six apple. Uh, and one green, one dollar down there. Can you see now? My father told to draw model. Yes, correct. All right. So sometimes model really helps you. But do have a few methods in mind. All right. You can have the model. You also can have something called the units method. And next lesson, right, I'm going to teach you something called the guess and check, which many of you know already. But on top of guess and check, there's something called the assumption or the supposition method. All right. So the next lesson, yes, is something called guess and check or supposition method. I'm going to call that lesson chickens and goats, all right? Because this type of question, right? Always talk about the farm. You got so many chickens, you got so many goats running around, all right? So it's called the chickens and goats. That's for the next lesson, okay? Okay, so down here, what's happening? Remember the white color is your total. The white color cannot change, huh? all right? So what's happening? So there is a second situation. What's the second situation? 
Eve, uh, if victory wants to buy eight apple instead, okay, okay. So that, this is like situation number one. This is like situation number two. All right, situation number two, remember the total uh, must still be the same size. All right, this total must still be the same size as above. All right, this total must still be the same size as above. How come? Because the total amount right, that she has, right, cannot change, right? All right, so this is the total that she has, right? It's just that it's another situation. So what happened now here? This second situation, she went to buy what? Eight apples. Uh. Okay, come, let's go and find eight apples. So you try to draw the apples the same size as above. One apple, two apple, three apple, four apple, five apple, six apple. Oh no, she still need to buy two more apples. But what the question say? If she buy eight apples, right, she will be short of 140. Oh, so if she want to buy another two more, right, she will need $1.40 more. So your the other two apples, just draw. Don't worry. So this is another apple. And this is another apple. Can you see it or not? It will be out of the white color box. How come? Because you got not enough. You got not enough to buy the white. The eight apples. That's why this, this, this uh, one and a portion of the apple is what? It's out of the box. Because you got not enough money. What? All right. So where is the, this portion? What is this amount called? This amount is called the what? This amount is called the short of 140. Because you got not enough. Imagine if you got the extra 140. If you got the extra $1.40, what happened? Can you buy the eight apples? Yes, you can. But because, because you do not have enough, all right? So what happened? The apples, some part of it is out of the, the white box. Can you see that? So the out of the white box, right? The white box is the total. Huh? Out of the white box, that one is the amount that you are short of. Then you compare with the above diagram. Compare with the above diagram. Look here. All right. Eh? Down here is supposed to be what? Down here to down here is supposed to be $1, right? You are short of $1 down here. This is supposed to be the short of $1, right? All right. Eh? Can you see something? What do you see? Looking at your model, can you see that this portion, right, is how many apples down here? This portion consists of two apples, right? And these two apples is how much? I can see that already. I can see that already. I can see that two apples is equal to what? Two apples is equal to the orange $1.40. Orange $1.40 plus the what? Plus the green $1. Can you see it not? Can you see that or not? So that is the beauty of the model. That's the beauty of the model. Once you can draw it nicely like, my, like mine, you can see that hey, there's actually an additional clue. Can you see that? Okay, that's the reason why we draw model. So $1.40 plus $1 is $2.40. All right, can you see that? So you've managed to find two apples really. So besides finding two apples, what can I do? Can I look for one apple? Sure, because the first question is looking for one apple. So one apple will cost how much? One apple will cost $2.40 divided by, divide by two. All right, $2.40 divided by two. So $2.40 divided by two will give you a what? Ah, this one, you all know when you talk about money, you're better at counting money than me, right? One dollar twenty cent. Yes, rush. Thank you. So down here is like one dollar twenty cent. So this will be the answer for part A, the cost of one apple. Woo! Can you see that? So once you draw the model, it's very very clear one. All right, but you must draw it properly. Draw it nicely. Can? Okay? Uh, should I use a ruler to draw? Maybe for P three P four, you can actually use your ruler to draw. But when you reach P five P six, I think freehand drawing is better. All right, reason is because sometimes, right, the question, there are too many questions in the P5, P6 exams. Until if you take the ruler and you draw, uh, one CM must be for one unit. Second CM is for the second unit. You're wasting a lot of time. All right, so ultimately, train your model diagram in primary 3, primary 4. You want to draw nicely, you draw nicely. But in P5, P6, right, you must have the basic idea how to draw your model already and be more confident in drawing freehand, all right, to cut down a lot of time, okay? So down here is question A, is $1.20 is for your one apple. How about B? Let's take a look at B. How much does victory have? Eh, how much? Ah? Means that, oh, they're looking for the total down here. They're talking about total money, right? So the question is talking about the total money she has. Can you see? So what you do? Eh, let's look at situation number one. Situation number one, with the total money, she can buy how many apples? One, two, three, four, five, six. She can buy six apples. Can I purposely go and find six apples first? One apple is $1.20. Six apple is, oh, this one is like the six time table. Six times 12 is, uh, sorry, this is like the 12 time table or the six time table is the same. Okay, six times 12 is what? Uh, six times 12 is $7.20, is it? Seven 
52, right? 12 times 6 is 72. Uh, primary 3 will be saying, actually, I'm primary 3, I haven't learned uh, my 12 time table. Uh, excuses. <laughs> All right, because at this moment, right, you've got nothing to do. You can actually take out your multiplication table and learn from 1 to 12. And don't stop at 12. Go to 13 if you want to. All right, don't say that. Ah, that's for primary 4. Don't say that. Don't say that. All right, learning such things, right, don't have H1. You cannot say that, oh, primary 4, then learn this. Primary 5, then learn this. No. All right, along the way, if you have the time and you can fully understand what is happening, right, build on it. All right, so $7.20 is for what? 6 apple. 12 times 6 is 72. All right, eh, but she still got $1 left down here, the green color. Remember here? Please remember to add it back. $7.20 plus $1. Yes, a lot of you got the answer already. All right, answer is $8.20. And that's the final amount of money that she has in her wallet. Is that okay? Yes, Rush. Thank you. All right, you're in P3. That's okay. All right. Whether you're in P3 or P4, it doesn't really matter down here because ultimately you must understand what's happening, right? Like Desmos, how do you add the numbers? The question is structured in this way. Do I understand the question? What is the question trying to say? And, and all this. All right. That is the thing that you're supposed to train yourself in. Can? All right. So, wow, you're in P2. Are you sure? All right. But it's okay. Don't worry. All right. But you can do it. Very good. Ah, uh, Shif Shakan. All right. If I pronounce your name wrongly, I'm so sorry. All right. So question six and seven is actually the homework from what? From the last week's worksheet. All right. And these are the working. These are the steps. So don't worry about it. Well, lawyer in primary one. Serious. Uh. All right. TAE, you say wait. Uh, okay. You're very smart. Uh. You know that I'm going to turn the page already. So you stop me before I turn the page. Smart. Uh. Smart uh, TAE. Uh. I don't know. <laughs> Boy or girl, I also don't know. All right. So anyway, um, I'm going to the next question. The next question, right, is not inside your worksheet. Huh? The next question is not inside the worksheet. All right. It's going to uh, teach you on something called the what? Last week, I did one of these type of questions also. All right. So I'm going to turn the page right now. All right, TAE. All right. Don't be afraid. You are those in Premier 5. All right. Uh. Kamalesh, which part you don't understand? Is it this question or is it something else? You want to type inside the group chat? Okay, no? Okay, never mind. So yes, uh, it's 8.20, you're right. Okay, let's move on. Okay, remember this question? Last week, I did one of these questions. My question to you is, it's not break time, ah, eh, 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 it's not break time, ah, come back here. All right, my question is, how many squares of site 4 cm can I cut from here? All right. Can you all please uh, try to attempt this question? How many squares of site 4 cm can I get from this rectangle of 38 cm by 32 cm? Okay. Do you understand the question? How many squares of site 4 cm can I get from here? Uh, Gani, you say it's 26. Ah. Uh, 26 is incorrect. 26 is incorrect. Can you try again? All right, so the question 72, uh, Andy. Yes, you're right. This time you got it. Prashant and 24 is wrong. All right, the answer, uh, Andy is the first one to got it, is 72. Smart boy. All right, 72 is the answer. Okay, so usually, right, many people will do this. Right, many people will say, go and find the area. But that is wrong, actually. Uh. So they will say, hey, find the area. Find the area of a square. How do you find the area of a square? Uh, I taught you how to find the area already. All right, that time we had this lesson on area and perimeter. Area of a square is what? All right, you take 4 times 4. Length times, length, length times breadth is 4 times 4 is 16 cm square. Can you see? All right, it's 16. Then you take the what? You take the area of the rectangle. Some of you are doing this. All right, this is the wrong thing to do. Uh. This is the wrong thing to do. Let me just show you what is the wrong thing. All right, area of rectangle is length times breadth. Length is what? Length is 38. The longer side is length. The shorter side is the breadth. Length times breadth, 38 times 32. Okay, some of you say, hey, I don't know how to multiply what? Two numbers. Okay, this is one, uh, one example I'm going to show you. All right, so for the P3s, maybe you say that you haven't learned this. Uh, it's okay. Now you see it next time. When you see it again, you will know what to do. Let's go. So you do the same portion. You do on the right-hand side first. You read it as 2 times 8. All right, down here, 2 times 8 is what? 2 times 8 is a 16. You put a 6 here and the 1, 1 tenths, you put it on top. So, same, next thing, uh, you have to finish up your 2 first. 2 times 8 is 16. 2 times 3 is a 6. 6 plus this 1 will give you a 7. Alright? Then after that, it's not over yet. It's not over yet. What must you do? Uh, for a 2-digit multiplication, right, you must put a 0 down here. 
there's a standard zero that you have to put out there. Now, after doing the two times reading, you have to do the three times. Three times eight down here. Three times eight will give you a 24. Put a four here and put a two on top. Three times three is a nine. Nine plus two is a 11. All right. So you put an 11 there. All right, next time you'll be training to do all this multiplication. Don't worry. Don't worry. I'm right? just showing you one time so that in future you say, oh yeah, I see this before. So now you have to add them. 6 plus 0 is a 6. 7 plus 4, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11 is a 11. Here is a 2 and here is a 1. All right, so it's a 1, 2, 1, 6. If you take the 38 times 32. Okay, so this will give you a 1, 2, 1, 6. Then, then some of the students say, oh, then I need to divide. Wow. Wow. So the number of what? Number of squares. Number of squares will be you take uh you take one, two, one, six, divide by sixteen. Oh no, how to divide? Such a big number, how to divide? Uh, so you got more problem, right? Then some of you will say, okay, let's press the calculator. All right, we can press the calculator, but again, I just want to show some of the students how to do it. All right, just for just for fun. So down here you have one, two, one, six. You want to divide by sixteen. This is like your 16 timetable, you know. Oh no, what do you do? 16 timetable, how do you do? You list out the 16 timetable a little bit on the right-hand side. 16. Next one is what? 16 plus 16 is a 32. All right. Then 32 plus 16 is a 48. Then 48 plus 16, you have to list out no choice. It's a 64. All right. 64 plus 16 is a what? Uh, 70, 80, is it? All right. 6, 7, 80. All right, so it's like 16 times 1 is 16. 16 times 2 is 32. 16 times 3 is 48 and so on. All right, how much list out? Uh? If you want to do the 16 timetable, you have to list out. All right, if you don't want to press the calculator and P3, P4, you usually cannot press the calculator. What do you do? You need to find a way out. All right, just don't say, ah, I don't want to do that. So difficult. Don't say that. All right, you can use all this knowledge to slowly get to the answer. Don't worry. You have to persevere. Okay, don't give up that easily. So uh, 16 times 6 will be what? 80 plus 16 will be 96. All right, uh, 96 plus 16 is what? Uh, I don't know. So you might want to do a side working down here. All right, it's very tedious. Yes, but sometimes you've got no choice. You have to do it. 112. 112 plus 16. All right, this is called your 16 timetable. Okay, that's how you extract out your 16 timetable. It's a little bit time consuming. I totally agree. Okay, but if you want to do the question, do persevere. Thank you, Rush. Uh, why do we do 4 times 4 to find the area of the square? Okay, so down here, 16 times what is 1, 2, 1, the closest. 16 times, this is 1, this is 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. 16 times 7, closest is 1, 1, 2. All right, so that is the closest to 1, 2, 1. All right, so after you minus away, uh, 21 minus 12, uh, I think it's a 9. You count up a 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21. Yes, 9. And you bring out the 6 down here. All right? So 96, hey, 96 is 1. 96 is 1. So 16 times 6 is 96. Can you see? So this is one of the way to do your division. All right? Then some of you will say, ah, total is 76 what? 76 squares. Because you're looking for something called the area. All right? So you're looking for the area. Area you compare with area. So the entire area of the rectangle is 1, 2, 1, 6. The area of one square is 16. So how many 16 are there in 1, 2, 1, 6? Total got 76 one. Correct or not? Alright. So that's how I do my long division down here. Alright. So it's about being uh, a little bit... Um, it's uh, being a little bit... You have to persevere in terms of doing all these questions. Don't say, ah, uh, so troublesome, don't want to do. Alright. Persevere. Huh? So what happens next? Is this the correct answer? No. Just now I already said that and this answer is correct already. How come? Alright, because down here, you cannot, right? You cannot simply just take the square after cutting, right? The remainder you just super glue back. Cannot like that. Alright, what do I mean? Check this out. Alright, what do I mean? Check this out. Okay. So the correct answer, uh, the correct answer is actually this on top. Alright. So if you have a breadth of 32, 32, all right, the width, right, the breadth is 32. So inside 32, right, how many 4cm can I put? That's my question. So 32 divided by 4 is what? It's supposed to be 8. Can you see it now? So it simply means that my this drawing, right, I can uh, cut it into like, down here it's like 1, uh, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Can you see it now? 
So I can put in how many of these square? This is like one square, two square, three square, four square, five square, six square, seven square, and eight square. Can you see? So I can put in eight of this one along my width. Eh, but down here is 38, you know. 38 can divide by four or not? Because down here, right, the side of the square is a four. What? 38 can divide by four. If I take 38 to divide by four, what is it? Uh, 38 divided by four, never mind. I do my long division. 38 divided by four. Four times, uh, four times nine, four times nine is 36. All right, you got a remainder of what? Remainder of two what? Two cm. Do you know that? There's a remainder of two cm. What does nine means? Nine means right down here, right? I can cut down here. It's like one, uh, two, three, uh, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Can you see not? So I got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Hey, but I got a little portion here. Do you see my this red color portion? Ah, this portion, right, is my what? This portion is my remainder 2cm, which is, to me, is considered as a what? It's considered as a wastage. Because I cannot use it. I want to form a square, but my 2cm cannot form. So what happened? So my orange color portion, right, it can only stop up to here only. Can you see? So all these will have the lines, ah, all right, if you draw it uh, properly. All right, if you draw by something called visual, visual drawing, all right, it will happen something like that. So these are the number of squares you can cut out all right, from your, this piece of paper. All right. So all this on the left-hand side, the orange color portion right, is all the squares that you can cut out. Eh, all this red color portion weapon, all this red color portion are the what? The wasted. 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 Because you cannot form a proper green square. You want to form a proper green square, right? So this is the green square. Can you see not? you cannot form a proper green square. So how? So your red color portion is kind of wasted. All right, so that you have to understand. All right, that is the reason why, right, my answer is not what, 76. What is my answer? My answer is, how many do I have here? Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight times nine is a what? Eight times nine is a 72. So that's the answer. So the number of squares is actually, number of squares is actually 8 times 9. 8 times 9 equal to 72. And Andy is correct. This is the answer. Okay? Alright, some of you got it also. So answer is not 76. This is the wrong answer. Alright, so 38 divided by 4 is actually a 9 remainder 2. Huh, sure. You mean that every time this type of question comes out, I need to drop? No need. Alright, you do the above step. Look at this step down here. Look at this, uh, this, this star down here. Do you see the star? All right. Look, do, do, just, just do this step. Take the width, divide by the, the side of the square, like four or five, depending on the question. Take the length, divide by the side of the square. And down here, right, you get the eight and the nine. Don't care about the remainder. This one, don't care. Simply just take the answer, right? Eight times nine, right? The quotient, right? Eight times nine. All right, eight and nine. You just multiply. Don't care about the remainder. So 8 times 9 will give you a what? Immediately, it gives you a 72. Alright? So you can do what? Actually, can you see that it's shorter? Look at the first way. The first method. The first method not only gave me a wrong answer, it wastes time, alright? And it's wrong. And look at the steps. Ha! Huh? Must multiply, must divide. Ah, sure. Crazy. Yeah. So sometimes it's all about method. You must know what the question is asking for. Alright? And you apply the correct method into it. If not, you'll be wasting time. You'll be wasting effort. Can you see? Alright? So the second method down here, uh, the, this one, uh, this one, uh, the star down here, uh, this is the correct one. Alright, and the answer is what? Answer is 72. My question is, how many force, how many squares, right, of side 4 cm can I cut from here? Then you say, hey, hey sure. then how come got 76? Uh? How come the first method got 76? Okay, the reason, right, just for some of you who want to know the reason, what's the reason? Can you see? Can you see that this 2 cm down here, right, this 2 cm here, alright, um, I'm going to uh, use another color. All right, uh, this uh, blue color, uh, this portion, right, this one, can you see this arrow here? This one and this one, all right, if I combine together, it forms what? Can you see that if these two, right, these two, I combine together, it forms a what? It forms another square. This one and this one combines together, it forms another square. This one and this one, it combines together, it forms another square. This one and this one, it combines, it forms another what? 
square. Can you see not? So down here, between 76 and the correct answer of 72, there's a four missing square. All right, if there's a four missing square, where does it come from? It comes from here, 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 here. Can you see it not? But remember one thing, all right, you cannot super glue back. You cannot, you can only cut. You cannot super glue back. All right, you cannot say just take two parts and glue it back. Nope, you cannot do that. All right, that is the reason why down here you got a 76 square because they super glue back. Can you see or not? So the question is, how many squares of sides 4cm can you get from this rectangle? Right? Mm. All right, uh, some, one of the students, uh, Chloe, yeah, you are saying that you cannot hear me. I think you are having this problem last lesson also. So can you try to adjust your headphone a little bit? All right, I believe it's your connection because uh, uh, the rest of us, all right, they can hear me perfectly. So if you can, can you please try to adjust your headphone a little bit? Thank you. All right, P5 at Lloyd. Have you seen this question before? You have to see this question before. All right, and go and listen to this question again. All right, I'm not going to cover this in primary five. No. All right, maybe lah. All right, ah, we shall see, we shall see. Okay. All right, so this is my second time doing this type of question. And later, later I will do another very similar kind of question. All right, something to do with the string and thread and all this. Uh, Chloe, yeah, yes, you can. All right, I didn't lock the classroom. So you can leave the classroom and come back in. Don't worry. All right, I'm here. I'm here. Can? So please do understand how to do this type of question. Now, let's go on to our first question in today's worksheet. All right, it's something called posts and gaps. It's something called posts and gaps. Okay, so down here, what do we have? Questions say that the lamp posts, right, are placed eight meters apart along an expressway. So down here to down here, right? All right, there is a gap of what? From here to here, there's a gap of eight meters. All right, it's eight meters apart. From here to here, is another gap of 8 meters. Alright, so in between the lampposts, right, there's a lot of 8 meters, right, depending on how many lampposts are. Can you see not? Depending on how many lampposts. But the gap is what? The gap is 8 meters apart. Alright, Rush, you got it? Yes. Alright, answer is 101. Very smart, lah. I think you're a girl, right? Smart girl, Rush. Alright, uh, yes. Uh, so, Nyobo also, yes. Yes, Prishan also, 101. Very good. Many of you remember to add back the one. Very good. Alright, so what's happening is, this express right, right, this entire expressway is what? 800 meters apart. And you don't care about the width of the lamppost. Where is the width of the lamppost? This is the width of the lamppost. You can, don't tell me that this portion, uh, this portion is like one meter and all this. No, no. That's why the question said there's an assumption here. Don't care about the width of the lamppost. It is negligible. So you don't care about it. So how many gaps are there? All right, there is. You have to count first. In the entire length of 800 meter. All right, one gap is eight meter. Right? So how many eight meters are there in 800 meters? How many eight meters are there in 800 meters? That's the question. All right. So you can simply take your 800 divided by eight. This is easy. 800 divided by eight, 100. What is this 100? Be careful. This 100 is 100 gaps. 100 gaps. But what is the question looking for? Question is looking for lampposts. All right. If the question is looking for lamppost, right, they are not talking about the gaps here. If they are talking about the lamppost, remember, you have to plus one. 100 plus one to give you 101. Yes. All right, selling you're right. 101 lamppost. All right. So remember this type of question. All right. When they ask you to find what? To find the number of lampposts, right, you must remember to plus one, please. Okay. It's just like my fingers. Hey, children, look at my fingers. All right. How many fingers do I have? Can you see I got five fingers? One, two, three, four, five. How many gaps are there? Count. One gap, two gap, three gap, four gap. Can you see not? If there's four gaps, four plus one, five. Five fingers. Can you see not? Now, I got how many fingers? Four. Ah. All right, down here got four. Ah. So how many gaps? One gap, two gap, three gap. If there's three gap plus one, you will give me my four fingers. So the fingers is like your lamppost. Can you see not? The fingers is like your lamppost. So if down here, I only got three fingers. How many gaps? One gap, two gap. This also means that what? This also means that the gap is always one less than the number of poles or the lamppost or the fingers. Can you see not? All right, you have to be able to see that. All right, so there's something called gaps and pole. It's two different things. Gaps is the in-between. All right, pole is this one. One, two, three. So from gaps, how do you get to pole? Please remember to plus one. Is that clear? All right, so this is our question, right? Many students forget to plus the one. Uh, all 
All right, so you can play your fingers. All right, in exam you cannot bring anything to the exam hall, right? But you can bring your fingers, right? Then you can start to count, lah. Eh, I got three fingers. I got two gaps here. Eh, okay, what? Can you see now? So use what you have in your examination, ah, in order to what? In order to secure marks. Good. Yes. All right. So this is for question one. Question two is a little bit different, really. Question two is a little bit different. All right. What's so different about it? Ah, this one, right? The table itself is what. 70 cm by 70 cm. All right. So down here, right, it's not negligible anymore. All right. So down here, what's happening? Let me draw out a little diagram just to make myself feel a little bit more comfortable. Because can you see now? One big paragraph, so scary. All right. So let me just try to draw a little diagram just to make myself a little bit more comfortable. All right. So maybe on the right hand side down here, on the left hand side, let me draw out the, the hall. All right. This is like the hall. So I believe the hall is a long hall, right? You know the examination hall? And the question did say what? Uh, uh, okay, in the examination hall, a table, a tables are arranged 80 cm apart. Oh, so the gap, uh, the gap, uh, the gap is 80 cm from the table in front. The dimension, okay, the table, the size of the table is given. It's 40, uh, 70 cm by 70 cm. It's a square table, okay. Then what happened? A table is placed right in front of the hall. Okay, okay. So I have a table. Uh. This table is placed right in front of the hall already. All right, this table is a what? Questions say that this table is a square table. How I know? 70 cm by 70 cm. Uh. So this table is 70 cm by 70 cm. All right, so at the beginning of the hall, right, in the front part of the hall, a table is placed there already. So that is my diagram. All right, I just want to uh, make myself a little bit more confident. Right, that's the reason why I want to draw something. If not, it's very stressful. One big paragraph, right? There's so many words, so scary. Okay, come. The distance between the front to the back is 0 0.1 kilometer. Okay, okay. So from front to the back of the hall, from the front, this is the front of the hall, to the back of the hall. Okay. So when I draw right, I feel a little bit better. All right, from the front to the back. Okay. What is the distance? 0 0.1 kilometer. Wow, sure. 0 0.1 kilometer? What is that? Here, the question is talking about what? The question is talking about the table being in centimeter. Centimeter, but 0 0.1 kilometer, how to compare? Very difficult, right? So in this case, right, we don't want to compare kilometer and centimeter. Very difficult. Eh? Yes, Mr. Ong taught me how to do the what? Conversion already. From kilometer to meter first. Let's do kilometer to meter. Kilometer to meter. K. K, K means what? K means times 1,000. Alright. So down here. 0 0.1 kilometer change to meter times 1,000. Alright. Times 1,000 to be given a meter. Eh, 0 0.1. 0 0.1 how to times? Don't worry. Mr. Ong taught me how to do the what? Do the movement. Alright. So it's like the 0 0.1. Uh, 0 0.1. 0 0.1 is like that. On top. Uh. Times. Times means go to your right. Uh. 3, 0 means 3 movement. So 1 movement, 2 movement, 3 movement. Alright, so you put the decimal down here. The old decimal you erase away. Alright, empty slot you put in the 0. Oh, it's 100. Yes, this gives you 100 meters. Can you see? So whatever I taught to you, right? Yes, everything you have to slowly try to combine them into those questions that the, question, uh, the teachers give you already. Can you see not? So all these are taught to you. The moving decimal. Do you remember? I hope so. All right. Some of you are new. You never attend the lesson. Don't worry. All these lessons, right, already recorded up in our website. Just go and check it out. Okay. So it's hundred meters. Hey, but the table is what? The table is in centimeter. Centimeter. So once again, from meter to centimeter, what do I do? All right. From meter to centimeter, I have to convert again. So how to convert? You have to times one hundred. 1 meter is 100 centimeter. All right. 1 meter is 100 centimeter. So down here, you continue by saying that down here, right, 100 uh, meter, I need to times 100 to give me what? Oh, 10,000 what? Centimeter. Oh, okay. See, I managed to convert properly. Yes, Rush, you got it. Yes, uh, Shivan. All right, you got it. All right. So it's 10,000 centimeter. Can you see that? So the entire from the front to the back of the hall is 10,000 centimeters. Okay, okay. So these are the information that I have. Hey, oh, got one more thing. Got one more thing. All right, there's one more thing down here. Uh, there is a gap. What's the gap? All right. 
uh, the the tables are arranged in such a way that they are what eighty cm apart. Oh, so there's a gap of eighty cm. Okay, so there's a table in front, seventy cm. Then there's a gap of eighty cm apart like that. This is a gap of eighty cm. Can you understand the question? Eighty cm gap. After the eighty cm gap, there's another table. There's another table here. So let me just draw it out just to feel better. Okay, so this is the idea. All right, this is the table. This is 70 cm. All right, then after this table, there's another gap. There's another gap. All right, there's another gap here. There's another gap here, which is another 80 cm. All right. Ah, so down here, right, this thing will go on and on until the back of the hall. So can you see? So I call this what? Learn, uh, learn this. Uh, I call this like one set here. So inside one set, right? Inside one set, it consists of one table and one gap. All right, one set here consists of one table and one gap. And what is the distance for this one set? What is the distance for this one set? All right, so the one table is 70 cm plus the gap itself is 80 cm. One set, not one gap. Huh? So one set inside consists of one table and one gap. So if you want, you can do a side working here, 80 plus 70. That will give you an 8 plus 7 is a 15, right? 150. 150 cm. Can you see now? All right. So one set, yes, Rush, you're right. One set consists of one table and one gap. One table and one gap. One table and one gap. So this is considered one set because can you see now? It's like a pattern like that. It's like a pattern. One table, one gap. One table, one gap. One table, one gap. Yes. All right. So this is like one set. Okay. Um, Chloe, you have a question? Yep, uh, okay, wait, uh, let me find your name. Chloe, okay, Chloe. Uh, Chloe, wait, uh, Chloe is here. Yes, Chloe, what's up? Uh, teacher, I don't understand why you 100 times 100. Uh, Chloe, I'm changing from meters to centimeter. Oh. All right, so one meter is equal to 100 centimeter. We went through this, right? One meter is like 100 centimeter. All right, so when people say that I'm 1.72 meter, if I am 1.72 meter, 1.72 times 100, I'm 172 centimeter. Can you see that? Mm. So the, the reason why I, uh, the reason why I times 100 is to change to centimeter. Is that okay? Okay, yeah. All right, so one set, uh, one set consists of 70 cm, which is the table, plus uh, 80 cm of the gap. So total is what? One set is 150. So here comes my question. All right, here comes my question. My question is, from the front to the back of the hall, it is 10,000. Uh, wow, so big number. So inside this 10,000, right? Inside this 10,000 centimeter, inside this 10,000 centimeter, how many sets of 150 are there? All right, how many sets of 150 are there? So this number I have to divide by 150. Can you see it now? I'm looking for how many sets are there? All right, that's the question. Okay. Uh, Shiva, you have a question? Uh, let me try to unmute you. Let me look for your name first. Yes, Shiva. Are we gonna are we gonna draw the whole of the exam hall? No, we are not. We are not. We do not have time to do that. All right. If we draw that, we will go crazy. So don't do it. All right. So we, we draw something like that is just to give us an idea of what is happening for the rest of the exam hall. So we draw a little bit, then after we get the idea, we know that at the back, right, it will be the same thing. Can you see or not? So you don't draw everything. Don't draw everything. Is that okay? This is just to give us an idea of what is happening. A table followed by a gap. A table followed by a gap. All right? It's just to give you a visual idea what is happening in the SM hall. Is that okay? All right? Uh, Lloyd, I, I don't understand. Can you please teach me my homework? Uh, I'm sorry, Lloyd. I'm, I'm having a lesson here with the P3 and P4. All right? If you have a homework question that you want to uh, know, right, you can actually WhatsApp me. All right? So please. Let's, let's focus on the right thing here. 
All right, the P three P four they are learning something called posts and gaps. All right, for your homework, just WhatsApp me. Right, is it okay? You forget your number, don't worry. All right, it's it's available everywhere. All right, you can go and search for it. Okay. So down here, right, one ten thousand cm is from the front to the back of the hall. All right, or you can wait for me, Loy. All right, the end of this slide, right, there will be my number down there. Can. Okay, so from the front to the back of the hall right, is 10,000 centimeter. Eh, how many sets are there? That's the question. Okay, so I need to take what? Oh no, such a big number, so scary. It's okay, all right? It's okay, don't panic. So we have 10,000 down here, divided by 150. So cheer, does it mean it's a 150 timetable? Yes, yes, it's supposed to be your 150 timetable. Okay, so 150 timetable, you have to list out. 150, after that is what? 300. 300 after that is 450. After that is what? 600. 600 plus 150 is 750. 750 plus 150 is 900. All right. 900 enough or not? Eh, I think it's enough. So this is like 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. This is your 150 timetable. Wow, so scary. Yes. So 150 times 6 will give you a 900. So you put your 900 here. All right. So 1000 minus 900 will give you Remainder 100. Bring down the zero here. All right. So 150 times what will give you a 1,000? Another six to give you a 900. All right. So 1,000 minus 900 is another 100. This is your remainder. 100 what? 100 cm is your remainder. So what's your answer? Your answer is what? I can have 66, what? The quotient. The, this is called the quotient. 66 sets. All right. 66 complete set. Eh, what is one set? One set is one table and one gap. One set is one table and one gap. Total, I can have 66 sets. And after having 66 sets, I will have a remainder of what? 100 cm. Can you see now? It means that I will have 66 of these. Huh? This is like one set. Right? I have 66 of this. This is another one. Another one. I got 66 of this, you know. Woo! All right. Until the end, right? Until the end, I have a what? Until the end, I have a remaining of what? A remaining of 100 centimeter as the remainder. Can you see or not? So that's the idea. Right? As I say, the reason of you drawing this hall, right, is to give you a basic idea how many, what? How, what, 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 is, the, what is the examination hall looks like with the table and the gaps and all this? What is it looking like? So once you have this idea, okay, okay, wow, I need to have uh, 66 sets of this, all right? 66 of all this, all right? Eh? One set consists of what? One set consists of one table and one gap, right? One table and one gap. So, question is saying, find the total number of tables that can be placed from the front to the back. One set got one table and one gap. I got 66 sets. Means what? 66 tables. Correct, all right? 66 sets means 66 tables. Eh, but what? You have a remainder, Andy, you're right. All right, you have a remainder of what? You have a remainder of 100 cm. This remainder of 100 cm, can I squeeze in one more table? What is the length of one table? One table, the length is what? 70 cm. Eh, can I? The 100 cm, right? The remainder of 100 cm, I can squeeze in one more table. So, plus one. All right, so this remainder of 100 cm, I can actually squeeze in another table. So your final answer is 67 tables. Can you see or not? All right, that's why you must be able to understand something called sets here. Sets means what? Uh, like in this case, it's like one table and one gap. Can you see? Yeah, some of you got correct in the first place. Very good. All right, so question can be asked in such a way. All right, when there's no diagram draw for you, don't worry, you can actually sketch out your own. Once you sketch out, you have a visual what? You have a visual uh, understanding of what is it. Andy, yes, I saw your 67 already. All right, please do not spam me. All right, don't do that. All right, the remainder is what? I thought it's supposed to be a capital R. Yes, okay, fine. You want to give it a capital R like this? All right, if that makes you happy, don't worry. Can okay? Usually, I write it as a small R. Don't worry about that. That's a small issue. Uh, Victoria, you have a question? Okay, wait. Huh? Let me search for your name. Victoria. Oh, oh, Victoria, can you try to you want to key into the private chat because I think I got problem looking for people's name. Okay, wait, 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 Victoria. Victoria. 
Um, my question yes. is like, Matthew, um, do so many steps just to find one answer. Is that like a faster way? Or is this just the only faster way? Uh, sometimes right, it's not about faster or slower. It's about getting the correct answer. Do you want to get a correct answer? Do you want the marks given to you? If you want it, so it's not about uh, you know, uh, faster or shorter. It's about understanding the question. Once you understand the question, right, you have your own method to get to the answer. So if your method takes a longer time, it's perfectly okay. Why? Because you give the final answer. Why? So your teacher will mark on your final answer. So for this question, why is it a little bit longer? Is because I'm doing it very slowly. I'm explaining it step by step. I'm even drawing out, you know, the diagram and all this. Hopefully, more students right, can understand what is happening. Because in this primary 3, primary 4 uh, group, right, there's many uh, students of different levels. There's even a primary 2 students. So I'm trying to really uh, draw out, make them visualize, let them have an understanding of what is happening, and then they can uh, at least, you know, move on from down there. Alright, so if you think that the, uh, there's an easier method, yes, easily I will simply take what, 0 0.1 kilometer, change to centimeter. I will immediately times what? Times 10,000, do you know that? All right. so why, why times 10,000, uh, sorry, times 100,000? Alright, so that's my faster way of doing. So again, my fast might not be your fast, you see. So you'll be asking me, hey, how come teacher must times 100,000? So again, all this, right, you have to, how to say, you have to slowly train yourself in a way to suit your own, your own pace and suit your own understanding. So I don't think there's a faster way or slow way. It's a way that you fully understand, then that is your way. All right, that's my, that's my take on this. All right, but how to do this question, you still have to do it like that. All right, you still have to take 10,000, divide by what? 150, all right, to give you a 66. Remainder something, all right? Then you must remember to plus one back law. It's actually a very short way already, right? All right, nothing very long already, huh? So Victoria, I hope I, I, I answer your question. I don't know, is that what you're looking for? All right, all right. Uh, I see that some of you are raising your hand. You have a question, Rush. Okay, so come, Rush. Uh, my name is not Rush. My name is Rushita. Rushita, yes, yeah, sorry, Rushita. Is there a question? Um, uh, is it is it a must to draw the like? Don't need. As I say, as I say, the drawing of the diagram is uh for a visual. You know, it's visual using your eyes. So your eyes can see you're able to formulate out uh, certain steps in order for you to move on. So you don't have to draw. If you can see in your head, then you don't have to draw. All right. But for me, right, I'm a person who learn by drawing. If I don't draw, I feel so uncomfortable. If I don't draw, I don't understand. If I don't understand, I cannot do. That's the reason why I draw my diagram sometimes. All right, Rashinta, is that okay? So it's not compulsory to draw, huh? but you draw to be able to what? To understand what is happening. All right. Okay. All right. Uh, Tang, uh, Tang Kuo, Kuo, Kuo Chiang, uh, you got a question, is it? Okay, wait. Uh, Kuo Chiang, come. Hello, Tang? Yes, you're on. Don't need, don't have. <laughs> don't need, okay. Sorry. Huh? <laughs> okay, so cute you. Okay, so down here, right, I will move on to the next question, right? Uh, question three. Okay. Okay, question three is talking about something called too many and too little, all right? Uh, what is too many, too little? All right, some of your teacher will call this uh, short for uh, access and short for something like that. All right, access and short for. For this type of question, right, it's actually for the primary four students. Uh, after you have learned something called the factors and multiples, you need to know this, okay? And uh, primary five, this type of question do comes out, uh, so you must know how to handle, all right? If there's some primary five students down here, Chloe, I think you're primary five, right? All right, so please know what is happening. Very popular. So Andy, right? Andy has more than 11, but less than 31. What? Eh? And uh, Chloe is not primary five. Uh, sorry. All right. Uh, so Andy has more than 11, but less than 31 marbles. Oh, your P6. <laughs> okay. So if he puts them equally into bags of seven, means what? One bag got seven marbles. Second bag got another seven. Third bag got another seven. All right. So you are actually looking for the what? The multiples of seven. All right. Answer is 25. is correct. Very good. Lah. Uh, let's see. Uh. Right, so I will, I will write this out. This is called a listing method. Right, you're supposed to do something called a listing method here. Okay, so I write out the multiples of 7. M, uh, M represents multiples. M7 means the multiple of 7. All right, so usually I will list it out like that. And just to let you know, right, how many to list out, don't worry. You can list up to the 12th timetable. I think it's enough. 
right? Seven times one to seven times twelve. That's more than enough. So you list out as seven, fourteen. List it out neatly, ah. Uh. Seven, fourteen, twenty-one, twenty-eight, thirty-five, forty-two, forty-nine. This is your seven times table. Fifty-six, sixty-three, seventy. And if you want to list out to the eleven and twelve, that would be good also. All right. So you can actually practice on your seven time table like this. Can. All right. So your answers, right, will always, right, most of the time. All right. I do so many of these type of questions. Your answers, right, will mostly fall under the one to twelve time table. So you can list up to the twelve time table. Your teacher will not be so nasty to you. All right. Your teachers are actually very nice. All right. So multiples of seven, you list out already. But the question says what? If he put them equally into bags of seven, right? So one bag of seven, one bag of seven, and all this, what will happen? He will be short of three. Short of three means what? Not enough. All right. Short of three means not enough. So means what? Must minus three. Down here, the second one must be minus three. All right. So if you got seven, you must minus three because what? You got not enough. Right? Not enough means minus three. So seven minus three is a four. So you do the listing again. 14 minus 3 is a 11. Uh, 21 minus 3 is a what? Uh, is it 18, 18, 19, 20, 21? Yeah. Uh, 28 minus 3 is a 25. This is the best time to train your what? Your mental calculation. 35 minus 3 is 32. Uh, 42 minus 3 is 39. Correct not? 39, 40, 41, 42. Correct. Uh, 49 minus 3 is 46. All right. 56 minus 3 is 53. So the next row, you do all the minus 3 as from above. 60. Uh, 67, uh, 74, 4, 5, 6, 7, 81. Can you see? So the white color portion, right? One of them is the answer. The white color portion, 4, 11, 18, 25, 32, one of them is the answer, but I don't know which one. Then I have to look at the second condition. What is the second condition? Second condition, if he puts them equally into bags of three, all right? Bags of three means what? Three times table, means M3. All right, so you write them neatly, uh, all in the same column, all in the same row. Uh. So you list out your three times table. Three, six, nine, twelve, fifteen. Where do you stop? As I say, right until your, um, uh, your twelve times table. It will be more than enough. All right, your teacher will be uh, very nice to you. Uh, will not give you extra. I hope so. <laughs> all right, if there are teachers down here, please, all right, don't do this to your student. Don't give them more than twelve times table. All right. If right, if I pack them in groups of three, what will happen? I will have one extra. What's the meaning of one extra? Eh, extra one nah. Extra means what? Plus one nah. Can you see not? The meaning of extra means you plus. The meaning of short off means you minus. So plus one. So everybody must plus one. Okay. So let's go on. So three plus one is a four. Six plus one is a seven. Nine plus one is a ten. So you keep listing it out. Sixteen, nineteen, twenty-two, twenty-five. 28, 31, 34, and 37. Okay, now you have to look for the correct, the same number, the same numbers that appears. In this case, what is the same numbers that appear? All right, can you see? All right, A4, is for the answer? Is for the answer? Hey, but the question did say, oh, must be more than 11, less than 31. I, uh, I thought 4 is the answer. Okay, then you look some more. Look some more, 10, 13, 16, 19, 22. Hey, 25, down here got 25. 25 and 25. Hey, is 25 the answer? Yes, the white color, right? The white color, the first situation got 25. The second situation also got 25. And 25 is between 11 and 21. Yes, so answer is 25. 25 what? Answer is 25 marbles, no? Can you see now? How many marbles does Andy have? Andy has 25, yes. Our dear ND also got correct 25. Can you see not? So this is how you do it, do it by something called listing method. All right. So this is something which is important. Huh? Short off means what? You have to minus. Extra means you have to plus back. All right. So some of the P5, P6 down here, right? this is a question, very, very simple one. All right. Use the listing method. It's still okay. Don't worry about it. Okay. All right. So another example, huh? question four. Let's go into question four. Barney, oh, my favorite dinosaur. Barney has some cookies. If he gives seven cookies to each of his friends, eh, seven cookies means what? All right, seven means what? Each of the friends gets seven. The next friend got seven. The next friend got seven. So you're looking for something called the what? Yes, the multiples of seven. Yes, uh, Tia Yi, uh, listing method. You have seen this listing method? Yes, good. All right, so it's not uh, a new method. 
this is something that your school teach also, what? listening method. Right? But it's, uh, how to say, it's a little bit troublesome because of all the what? listing out. La. Can you see not? Alright, and some of you, right, are you, your seven time table, need to go and relearn and back up on it. Alright, if not, right, one number wrong, the whole thing wrong. Can you see how dangerous it is? Alright, so you have to be very good in your multiplication table. Alright, so train on your multiplication table. So again, right, seven cookies to each of the friends. So each friend got seven, each friend got seven, each friend got seven. So you're talking about the seven time table also. Alright, so seven time table, you can start to list them out again. Okay, so you list them out neatly. Ah. 7, 14, 21, 28. Oh, this is my second time listing out the seven time table. Alright, why? Because it's important. Ah. Alright, many of you don't like the seven time table, the eight time table. Alright, you all like the simple, simple one. That's why I don't give the simple numbers, you see. I give the bigger number. Alright, 77 and 84. Can you see that I'm writing faster already? How come? Because with practice, right, it makes you better. Alright, so I keep on practicing, it makes me even better. I can talk to you and also write at the same time. And what happened? If he gives seven cookies to each of his friends, he will have three left. Eh, hey, three left means what? What's the meaning of three left? Got extra three left. Ah. can pass to me. Lah. Got extra three left means what? Plus three. Lah. Can you see not? That's the meaning. Alright. So extra three left means you have to plus three. Seven plus three is a 10. 14 plus three is a 17. And so on. 24. Uh, 28, 29, 30, 31. I'm using my fingers to count. Yes, don't laugh. Lah. 38, 45, 49, 50, 51, 52, uh, 56 plus 3, 59, 66, 73, 80 plus 3, right? And 87. Alright, so if your mental calculation is strong, right, all this writing out is actually quite fast. Uh, selling answer is 45, is it? Yes, smart girl. I think, I think it's a girl. Yes, 45. All right, so this is the first situation. Second situation, eight, uh, eight time table. Oh no, oh no. Train on your eight and seven time table. Multiples of eight. So in line, uh, eight, 16, 24, 32, 40, 48, 56, 64, 72, 80, 88, and what, 96, right? Can you see? So this is your eight time table. No fear. Then after that, after that, all right, after that, what happened? Uh, Andy, uh, you are requesting remote control of your screen. Uh, sorry, I cannot allow that. All right, so uh, please don't ask ready. Thank you. Down here, you're asking what? If you got, give the, if you give your friend each, right, eight, right? If you give your friend each eight, right? He will have a shortage of three. Uh, I.O. Shortage means what? Shortage means not enough. All right, not enough means what? You have to minus three. Can you see or not? So your short of 3 means you have to minus 3. So 8 minus 3 will give you a 5. 16 minus 3 will give you a 13. 24 minus 3 and so on. Alright, uh, I think it's 29. 29, 30, 31, 32, correct. Uh, this will be a 37, 45, 53, 61, uh, 69, 70, 71, uh, 77, uh, 85, and what, 93. Can you see? So now, what do you do? You look for the common number again. Look for the common number again. Alright, so what is the common number? Look, 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 look at the white color, white color. Ah, 45 and 45 is the common number, right? Yes. So in this case, answer is 45. Huh? Alright, you got 45 cookies. Can you see? Okay. Okay, so that's the way how you do this type of question. Too many, too little. Or in your, your teacher might call it assess and short for. Alright, excellent. Alright, so this is our question. Must know how to handle. Huh? Oh yeah, and someone looking for break already. Very good. Okay, la. Yeah, break time. <laughs> Alright, uh, break time is about two minutes. But in these two minutes, right, if you do want to go for your toilet break, right, I want you to answer this question. Question is, how many 60 cm? Alright, can you see the bottom? How many 60 cm can I get from three of this? Alright, each of it is four meter. How many 60 cm can I cut from this tree rope? Each rope is 4 meter. Alright, so if you have an answer, you can actually, uh, you can actually uh, give it to me. Alright, you can actually type in your uh, chat. Alright, question is how many 60 cm can I get from the uh, tree ropes down there? Each of 4 meter. Alright, um, Chloe, you did the wrong step again. It's not 20. 
Right. So I believe what Chloe did, right? I believe what Chloe did is this. All right. She managed to change 4 meter to 400 cm. So now she knows how to change to centimeter really. That makes me very happy. Huh? Good job, Chloe. So 4 times 100, right? Will give her 400 centimeter. 400 centimeter is what? It's one of the string. It's one of the thread. All right. If one thread is 400 centimeter, then she went plus what? I think she went to plus the second thread or the second rope plus the third rope. Or simply she take 400 times 3. That will give her 1,200 centimeter. Right? Then she will take 1,200 centimeter divided by 60. And that's why her answer is 20. 20, correct, is it? All right, that's how she get it. Correct or not? All right, Chloe, I think that's what you did. Unfortunately, unfortunately, the answer is incorrect. All right. Chloe, what you are doing, right, what you are doing here is you are actually trying to join this string and this string together. You are trying to join them together to make it what? To make it a one super long rope. Then you go and cut. But is it true that this is joined together? I never see that. I say there are three different what? I see that there are three different ropes. There are three different ropes. So you cannot join them together. You have to do it separately. All right. You have to do it separately. So what do you do? All right. So one rope down here is a 400 centimeter, right? Inside the 400 centimeter, how many 60 are there? That is your question. All right. So 20 is not the answer. Yes, 18 is the answer. Good job. Who is that? Lah? I think it's is it Andy again. All right, you ask. You ask uh, yeah, Andy again. 18. All right, that means you understand this type of question. Lah. Good. Lah. All right, Selin, you need to calculate faster. So 400 divided by 60 is what? You can do your long division. All right, 400 divided by 60. 60 times 6 is 360 already. All right, so there's a remainder of what? Remainder of 40 centimeter. Can you see? So one rope, ah, one rope you can have six. Six of this, all right, six of this, and you will have a remainder of 40 cm. Can you see? That's for one rope. Total, you got how many rope? Total, you got three ropes. So six of this times three ropes is 18. That is the answer, 18 pieces. All right, so Chloe, I hope you understand this type of question. Be careful, it's not 80, it's 18. I think you spell wrongly. Can you see or not? So be careful, ah. the remainder 40 is considered what? This portion is considered wastage. All right, this portion is considered wastage. It's very similar to the square example. Yes, how many squares are there in the rectangle? Can you see or not? It's about the same thing. So you must learn how to what? Understand the question. Don't anyhow just add everything together then divide one time. All right. All right, so that's all for the break time. All right, those who, are, who went for your break, you should be back. Huh? Two minutes passed really. All right, so let's move on to the next question. Question five. All right, I want to finish a little bit more. Alright, so down here, it's talking about something called age question. So what is happening? We have coach. Coach is a person. Coach is 10 years old. And mama is three times as old as him. So now, right, now, I put it in the center. Now, what is happening? Coach, uh, coach is C, is 10 years old. Let me draw uh, one unit. And the mama, M, uh, M for mama, is what? Three times. Can you see? Three times. Three of this. Is this okay? That means this one is the same size. Uh. Okay, so now coach is one unit. Mama is three units. Can you see? And we know that coach right is 10 years old. Okay, so now uh, now we know that this portion, this one is 10 years old. Hey, eh, that means mama is what? Mama down here is 10 plus 10 plus 10, which means that mama is 30 years old. Uh. Can you see it? Uh? 30 years now. And coach is what? Coach is 10 years. Is that okay? Now, then the question says what? What will their total age be in 10 years' time, you know? Okay, so now we have to fast forward. Fast forward, fast forward 10 years' time. 10 years' time, what happens? All right, 10 years' time. Coach will be how old? Coach now, uh, coach now is what? 10 years, right? All right, he is uh, 10 years old now. But please, uh, 10 years' time means you have to plus another 10. All right, you have to plus another 10. All right, uh, do you call your mother mama? I call her mommy. All right, and the mommy or the mama down here is what? She was 30 years old now, but in 10 years time, please, uh, it's a plus 10. It's not a times 10. 
Some of the students tell me it's a timestamp. That's scary. Uh. Timestamp means she's 300 years old. Uh. What is that? Vampire. All right, so plus another 10 years, right? The coach should be 20 years old. And mama, mama, 30 plus 10 will be what? 40 years old. Can you see not? So question asking what's their total age in 10 years time? So total age, uh, all right, total age will be how much? Total will be equal to 20 plus 40. Answer will be 60 years old. Is that okay? Yeah. All right, so A answer will be 60 years old. Is that okay? Okay. Uh? And, and now the part B, the question is asking. All right, question is asking. What was their total age five years ago? Okay, now you have to go backwards. So five years ago. All right, five years ago, what happened? So now, uh, now coach is 10 years old. All right, in five years ago, what happened to coach? Coach is now 10 years old. Minus five years ago, he'll be five years old. Mommy, mommy, now is 30 years old. After minusing the five years old, all right, five years ago means minus five, she'll be 25 years old. All right, so what's the total age? Question is looking for total, right? Total will be 25 plus five. This is easy, right? It's equal to 30 years. All right, so for part B answer is uh, 30 years. Is this okay? All right, but this, import, this question, right, I want to bring out something. I want to bring out something called what? I want to bring out something called age difference never change. Okay, let's look at now. Let's look at now. Let's look at now. Huh? Now, what is the differences in age? Differences means what? Differences means big minus small. Mommy is 30. Coach is 10. The differences is 20 years apart. 20 years apart. Can you see? In 10 years time, what happened? In 10 years time, what's the differences? All right, in 10 years time, what's the differences? All right, mommy is 40. Coach is 20. All right. Is, eh, it's still 20 years apart. Can you see or not? How about five years ago? How about five years ago? All right. Uh, what's the differences? Let's compare the differences. Differences means what? Big minus small. Mommy is 25 years old. Coach is five years old. What's the differences? Eh, they are still 20 years apart. Can you see or not? So what is happening down here? This is called age. Difference never change. You grow older, I grow older. Our age difference will always be the same. Right? For example, maybe let's say, let's say you're 12 years old. All right? I am what? For instance, I am 40 years old. All right? You're 12, I'm 40. So our age difference is what? 40 minus 12 is uh, 28. We will always be 28 years apart. All right? We will always be 28 years apart. Okay? Uh, Chloe, you have a question, I, I know. However, I'm a little bit tight on time here. All right, if you can, right, Chloe, just send me a message through WhatsApp. You have my number, I know you have. All right, so can you please just send uh, your message? All right, then I will answer you from down there. So down here, remember, uh, age difference never change. That's very important. All right, let's look at the next question here, question six. Question seven will be your homework. All right, question six, uh, when Daisy is 31 years old, Daisy is a D, Okay, and the daughter, daughter, I can spell it as a daughter. Yeah, I spell it daughter. Huh? All right, this is Daisy. When Daisy is 31 years old, let's say this is Daisy's age, the daughter is seven years old. The daughter is lesser. Can you see? Okay, so if Daisy is 31 years old and the daughter is seven, okay, this is my model if you want to draw a model. In how many years' time will she be twice as old as a daughter? Okay, this is our question. What you do? My advice to you, go and find the age difference. Trust me, it works well. So you're going to find the age difference here. So age difference is equal to what? Between the mother and Daisy, right? Age difference never changed, right? So 31 minus 7 is how much? All right, I'm going to play cheat. I'm going to press my calculator. 31 minus 7 is uh, 24 years. All right, 24 years apart. So they will always be 24 years apart. So now, what the question say? In how many years time will she be twice as old as a daughter? Selin, your answer is five, is it? Answer is five is correct, smart girl. So in how many years time, Daisy and daughter, will they be what? Will Daisy be three times, means three units like this, and the daughter be one unit like that? All right. When will this happen? Remember the age difference? Ah, the gap down here, right? The gap down here 
is the difference. Down here must be 24 years. Alright, so you can say that two units, right, actually represents 24 years. Go and find your one unit first. One unit will be 24 divided by 2 to give you your 12 years. Alright, so one of these is 12. Oh, that time the daughter is 7, now the daughter is 12. How many years apart is that? So 12 minus 7, that will be 5 years later. Alright, in how many years time? 5 years time. That's your answer. Can you see? All right, All right. I, I was looking at the back to see whether my dog is there now. So, uh, Chloe, uh, my dog is not here. I'm so sorry. Maybe the next time. Can I think I said that the last week or so, but yeah. Chowder is really not here, so I cannot bring uh, him to show you. Okay. All right, so down here, right, uh, answer is uh, five years old. Hopefully, you can understand. So, remember, each difference never changed. Uh, it's not, I, I say it's another person. It's not Chloe. All right. Chloe, I know you, are, you got a question to ask me. All right, a quick question, I know. Uh, please WhatsApp me, can? Okay, so the next one, uh, question seven will be your homework. Question seven will be your homework. All right, question seven will be your homework. So just try one question, have the idea, each difference never change, and that will be okay. Okay, question seven will be your homework, and down here, if you want to have more practice, right, for the P3, you can log into our 88 tuition account and attend lesson 12 and 14. For P4, right, you can attend uh, lesson 12 and 13. Alright, and this is my number down here. You can WhatsApp me at 8933-0213 if you have some of the questions. And those questions, if it's needed, I will put it on the what? I'll put it on the next lesson and we can discuss. Okay? Alright, and that's it. That's it for today. Alright, this lesson uh, is actually over already. Alright, so the next lesson, we will talk about something called guess and check. Okay, bye Natalie. Have a nice day. Alright, guess and check and supposition method. No problem, Celis. All right, I will see you in the next lesson. Yeah, push on, bye-bye. Is there homework? I just did say homework is question one. Question seven, yes. All right, I just did say question seven is your homework. All right, so you have a nice day and do take care, people. All right, be good. Don't be naughty, yeah? All right, bye-bye.